Hi everybody, it's story time. Come on, grab your friends, we'll go to imagination's end. Through song and laugh, there's lots of learning and the fun never ends. It's story time. Hi everybody, welcome to story time. I'm Mrs. Allie with the Naples Library and I'm here to give you your story time of the week. This week is a really big week, isn't it everybody? We had Thanksgiving yesterday, Turkey Day, and I hope that we all gave so much thanks for the wonderful things we surround ourselves with. Did you give thanks? What are you thankful for this year? I know it's been a tough year, but there's always things to be thankful for. Today is also another holiday. Today is Indigenous Peoples Day, which is a fancy word for the people who were here first. A long, long, long time ago, there were people in Naples, New York, and the people who lived here were called the Seneca Nation. And so today, we give thanks to all of the people who came before us by remembering them, remembering their culture, and remembering what they provided for us today. So I don't have a, a book to read for our, our theme of the week, which is giving thanks, but we do have three awesome new books here. We also have a fourth one, but it's already been checked out. At the Naples Library, we have three new books written by, for, or about Native Americans and their culture. The first one is called Fry Bread, and this is by Kevin Noble Maillard. This one is about all of the different types and styles of fry bread that the indigenous peoples make and how that unites them as a culture. We're going to be reading that book next week for Food Week. We also have a book called At the Mountain's Base, which is a beautiful poem about someone who goes to fight in a war and the family that is at home hoping that they're okay. And then the third book uh, of, by, and for Native Americans is called Go Show the World, a Celebration of Indigenous Heroes, and that's by Wab Canoe. And this is all of the Native American or indigenous people who have gone on to become superstars and to change the world. So these are really great books to read to teach our friends more about cultures that are originated in this area which is a really cool thing and good thing to do. The more you know, the better you are, right? But for today, I have chosen two books to read. The first book is all about giving and all about receiving. What others can receive when you give. This is a great book called Red Shoes by Karen English. And this is a Scholastic Press book. Here, let me scooch you in a little bit closer. I'll cut off part of my head so you can see the pictures. How's that? Red Shoes by Karen English. <clears throat> Red Shoes. Dazzling. Perched on a pedestal in the shop. This is a pedestal here. I want those, said not. I want those, Nana, said Malika to her grandmother as they passed the shop. We'll see, Nana says with a wink. Looks like you could use a new pair of shoes. Look how pretty and sparkly and shiny and new those shoes are. Surprise! Red shoes nestled in a shoe box under tissue paper on the kitchen table. Nana smiles her secret smile. She knows she did something good. <laughs> Malika laughs and slips them on. Quick, quick. <laughs> and 
and her kitty friend helps her out, huh? Red shoes, walking, click, clack, click, clack, across the floor on Malika's feet. Swish, 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 around the dining room. Click, clack, click, clack, click, clack, click, clack, down the hall. Then out the door and around the block, Malika goes to show off her new red shoes. Carefully, carefully, on the first day of school, Malika walks in big galoshes that hide her shoes from the rain. She wants to keep them dry when she jumps in puddles. Have you ever jumped in puddles? Make sure you've got rubber boots when you do it so your feet stay dry and you can still splash around and have fun. Red shoes dancing on daddy's feet when they go to auntie's wedding in the fall. Red shoes kicking cousin Jamal under the table at Nana's Christmas as he tries to snitch Malika's buttery biscuit. Get out of here, Jamal. You can't have my biscuit. That's my biscuit. Red shoes stomping home when Malika and her best friend Keisha have a fight. Malika is mad and sticks to it. Looks like Keisha's stomping home in her purple shoes, right? Red Shoes jumping double dutch at, dutch at Keisha's birthday party after they make up and be friends again. Because <laughs> that happens, doesn't it? Then, oh no! Red Shoes pinching when Malika squeezes them on to wear to Nana's birthday dinner at the restaurant. Oh no, here she is over here, not fitting in them very well anymore. My shoes are too small, Malika says sadly. And all through dinner, her red shoes don't let her forget that her feet have grown. You'll notice that, right? In your shoes, when your feet grow and your shoes get a little bit too tight, what do you do with those shoes when they get too tight? Red shoes in the window at the resale shop where Nana and Malika have taken them to be resold so someone else can buy them. You see them there in the window? One good thing to do with your things when you're finished with them is to give them to a resale shop so someone else can use those things that you're finished with. Softly, softly, Malika says goodbye to her wonderful red shoes. They were her favorite shoes ever. And Isaiah spies the red shoes dazzling in the shop window. She knows just the little girl who will love them. So it looks like the red shoes are going to someone else. Awesome. Now that they're squeezed into her luggage, bound for Africa. She's going to take those shoes across the world with her. They must be pretty special shoes and a pretty special someone, right? Red shoes under Inazia's bench in the marketplace where she sells her clay pots. They're waiting for Amina, the girl who fasted half the month of Ramadan. The girl who deserves a special gift. And here she comes at last, holding her mother's hand. So this is where these shoes will go. And Isaiah smiles down at Amina. I promised you a gift and here it is, she says. The red shoes are passed to Amina's waiting hands. Thank you, Auntie, she says. They're so beautiful. Then later, red shoes riding on the tro tro on Amina's lap. Back at home, Amina's little sister, Halima, rushes to see the gift for the girl who fasted half the month of Ramadan because someday, she hopes to do the same. Oh man, what'd you get? What'd you get? She 
says at home. <clears throat> Amina lets her try them on, but just for a little while. They're a little too big for her, you see. Halima will have them soon enough when Amina's feet grow too big and Halima's feet grow big enough. Now the red shoes are tucked safely under the bed, waiting to be worn on very special days. Meanwhile, back on the other side of the ocean, Malika wonders, whatever happened to those beautiful red shoes? What color shoes does she have on now? She's wearing blue shoes. She wonders if someone is wearing them right now. Isn't that so cool? She gave up her shoes when she didn't fit in them. They traveled across the ocean and someone else is wearing them and giving them good use way over in a different country on the other side of the world. That is an awesome example of giving, isn't it? All right, and the second book that I have for you today is called The Giving Day, and this is by Cory Dorfeld. This book is published by Abrams Books for Young Readers. We have a little truck going into or out of town here with a little guy hanging out of it. Super cute. Each year, everyone in Cubby Hill came together for the Great Giving Festival. We see all sorts of stuff happening here. Everybody's got stuff to give. What an awesome festival, a great giving festival. Here we have a pretty cool festival called the Great Festival, but wouldn't it be nice if we had a giving festival? Some brought tasty treats like fresh donuts or ice cream. We have a donut shop down here and an ice cream truck up here. Others brought art, games, or music to share. In tradition with the giving spirit Cubby Hill was founded on, everyone brought some way to give back and celebrate with their community. Whatever way they could give best, they brought it. So not everyone can give donuts, but if they can't give donuts, they can maybe give some music. They can maybe give some games. Maybe they can give some face paintings instead. Everyone has something that they can give. Cooper and his grandma always brought the final batch of honey from their beehives. This year, Cooper's grandma also thought that he was old enough to help deliver it all over the festival. Be careful, she said. Once this honey is gone, there is no more until spring. That's a very important job that he's got, isn't it? Don't worry, Granny Bee. Cooper was so excited. I'll make sure everyone gets their great giving gift because I'm... Super Cooper, the greatest honey hero in the universe. First up was the bouncy family. Hey, Bobby, said Cooper. I brought you some honey. Thanks, Cooper. Bobby zipped by. I'll get it in a second. We're trying to set up the bounce house, but my baby brothers keep getting in the way. Look at this poor rabbit, this poor bunny older brother. Look at all of his younger siblings go on crazy. They've got a lot of bunnies to wrangle, don't they? <laughs> so silly. Cooper had an idea. Don't
don't worry, I'll watch him for you, said Cooper. Super Cooper is the fastest babysitter in the universe. <laughs> That's a tall order. Cooper ran and jumped and did his best to keep the bunnies out of trouble. Oh man, there's so many of them though. <laughs> That's a lot of energy. <laughs> but somehow, they still got into Bobby's jar of honey. Gloop, 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 gloop. Oh no, he's dumping it on his little sibling's head. Oh man, and one of them took Cooper's glasses. He can't even see, but he knows something's wrong. Suddenly, Cooper didn't feel very fast. Sorry about the sticky situation. I'll help clean them up and stop by later with another jar of honey. Oh, he blamed himself for that. Next, Cooper saw his friend Henry unloading a cart for his family's paint a pumpkin stand. Henry, I have some honey for you, he called out. Oh, <laughs> Henry grunted. Thanks, just uh, set it over there, he said. Cooper couldn't, keep, couldn't help but notice how heavy all the pumpkins looked. I I'll help you carry those, Henry. Super Cooper is the strongest pumpkin picker in the universe. Thanks, said Henry. What a helpful friend. He's giving lots of ways, isn't he? Together, Cooper and Henry moved the pumpkins of all shapes and sizes. Everything went great until the very last one. Whoa, whoa, whoa. smash. Oh no. Suddenly, Cooper didn't feel very strong at all. Oh my gourd! I'm sorry. I promised to bring you another one, he said. Oh no, the honey is everywhere. <clears throat> Cooper was determined to successfully deliver the next jar of honey. So when he saw his friend, Stella, he rushed right over. This must be his friend Stella. She looked frustrated. Is everything okay? Cooper asked. Will honey cheer you up? Ugh! I'm trying to figure out a glitch on this virtual reality game, she said. I need someone to play it, but everyone in my family is afraid of heights. Look at this. You can see that she has a, it, this is called a flight simulator. So they're way up in the air and it looks like everyone in her family is very not into that, which is silly because they all look like squirrels, don't they? Maybe they're skunks. I can't tell. <laughs> Cooper smiled. This is going to be fun. I'll help you fix it. Super Cooper is the bravest gamer in the universe, he says. Cooper zoomed and buzzed while, Zella, er, while Stella typed and tweaked until all of the bugs were gone. Or so they thought. Now get your honey. Spider! Suddenly, Cooper did not feel very brave. Oh, and he dropped the honey. <sighs> I'll be back soon, he said. For the rest of the day, Cooper planned to be extra careful, but he still almost bumped into Muffin and Muffy McMousey. Oh, Cooper. Muff Muffin was overjoyed. Muggy and I went to find par a part for our ice cream maker and got lost. <coughs> Cooper didn't waste a second. Never fear, Super Cooper's here. I remember, 
Remember just where your family's truck is. Whoosh! Cooper got Muffin, Muggy, and the part for their ice cream maker back safe and sound. He almost felt like a real hero. But then Cooper went to give them their honey. Oh no, it's all gone. I'll be right back. Cooper ran as fast as he could to Granny Bee's honey stand. but he was too late. His friends were already there explaining everything to Granny B. Not only had Cooper ruined every great giving gift so far, now his grandma would never trust him to deliver the rest of the honey. Suddenly, Cooper just felt defeated. Oh no. Kept messing up and he feels so bad about it. But then, Super Cooper rules! Woohoo! I do? He said. They all came to thank you, Granny B smiled. Cooper could hardly believe it. For what? For being awesome! Bobby jumped up, jumped up and down. You helped me with my baby brothers. Our bounce house is up because of you. You're the best, said Henry. Your help is the reason all of our pumpkins are ready to decorate. Aww. So he is being helpful. You rock, Stella twirled. You helped make sure our, my game was bug-free. Squeak, squeak! And Muggy and I can never thank you enough, Muffin added, for helping us find our way home. Cooper watched as every single one of his friends went off to help him deliver the rest of the honey. And I want to thank you too, Granny Bee said for always helping anyone and everyone who needs it. That's what makes you my super Cooper, the greatest gift giver in the whole universe. Yay, what a good guy. And look, they get to watch fireworks. Can't pull that away, but they get to watch fireworks all night in celebration of Giving Day. And look here, we have some hives. These are beehives where they got their honey. All thanks to Cooper. So I hope that these books were great examples of how you can give and how people benefit from it including yourself. All right, everybody. Thank you for coming to Storytime today. I hope that you had a really great time and enjoyed both of the selections of books. And I hope to see you maybe in the library this coming week. We have all sorts of new books that you can check out. Until then, I'll see you next week for the Storytime Snippet, where we're going to make some delicious treats for the holiday season because next week we talk all about my favorite thing, food. <laughs> so we'll see you there, okay friends? Have a great rest of your holiday weekend. See you later, thanks for coming.